Hey everybody, welcome back to The Build Show. Steve Basic here. I'm out at our Passive House Vineyard project and I'm down in the basement. The last time we were here, if you remember, we didn't have a floor frame above us. We were setting the perfect block walls. If you haven't seen those videos, I suggest go back, check those out. It was a pretty uh, great sequence there that Farley and his guys put on for us. But uh, today, you can see here, we have our concrete chute here. What does that mean? It means we're getting ready to put in a basement slab. But before we pour the slab, let's talk about all the prep that goes into it before we actually put that concrete down. So we have our sandy gravel base under there. And then on top of that, we actually have two layers of this two and a half inch Type 9 EPS. It has a 25 PSI rating and its R value is roughly about 4.1. So that's gonna yield about a, a 21, 22-ish R value under the floor. And you can see that we turn it up at the perimeter here. I'm just gonna peel that off. And you can see here, we have the two inches. It comes up the wall and basically thermally seals that slab up against the wall. So the slab is fully thermally broken. And then on top of that, foam, we have a 10 mil poly here, and that's working as our vapor barrier, but it's also, we put it on top of the foam so that in all the cracks in the foam, we don't get concrete in there and have the foam go buoyant on us and create all these little iceberg effects. So the poly actually keeps the weight down on top of that foam and keeps it in place. So tomorrow, there's gonna to be a totally different look here. All this foam will disappear. We're gonna have that concrete slab. We're gonna have the poly sticking out of the ground here. We'll continue with insulation up the wall, but we're gonna to switch to, we'll do a wood framed wall. We'll pack that with cellulose and we'll run that all the way up to the bottom of the joist. But that gives us that continuity of thermal performance under the slab, up the sides, and then it connects to our wall. We got a few more details down here. Let's jump down to this other section of the basement and we'll talk a little bit more about this. All right, so we're down here at another section of the basement. You can see here, the slab area isn't as clean as it is down there behind me, right? In any basement, you're gonna have some level of services. There's gonna be plumbing. Um, in this case here, we have a bathroom in this area. So you can see we have an ejector pump here that gets the sewage up to a point where we can let it get um, send it out of the house. We have some uh, waste lines here for the plumbing. The tub uh, drain here is all built in. But what all this really amounts to is a series of penetrations in that foam and in our poly system there. So you can see what Farley did was at all these penetrations, basically we have a piece of poly that's capped, but it basically has a bead of sealant that runs around and then they just kind of squish that down and get that seal. Also notice in these areas, wherever we have a joint, we have this 3M tape here where we're basically um, taking that vapor barrier and creating that continuity and taping that off there. So again, continuity is the key in almost any control layer, whether it's vapor, thermal, all of those um, issues. Continuity is always the key. The last thing we want to talk about here before we leave the basement is, if you notice in here, we have this beautiful stone bed. Now, some of you are probably saying, well, why did he go through all the um, insulation and all the effort over here and then not anything over here? Well, that's because Farley and his wife are going to use this whole area as a root cellar. And we want that root cellar to be in this, its own conditioned space so it'll be insulated from the inside, but it's also coupled with the ground. So we get the moisture from the ground, the temperature from the ground, so that you're able to store your vegetables and all of that stuff for a very long time, going back in time with the way that we're storing stuff down here. Anyways, that's it from the basement of the Vineyard Passive House. We'll go back to the studio. I'll pull up some details. We'll talk about them a little bit more in depth there. So. See you back at the studio. Hey, everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, there's nothing more fun than talking about subslab insulation. 
unless, of course, you're talking about subslab insulation for a passive house. Of course, it is still a little bit more fun if you're talking about subslab insulation on a passive house in Martha's Vineyard. Anyways, guess what we got? Good friend, Big Red. We got some details here. Let's break them out and let's get at it. All right, everybody. So we got the detail. We got our good friend, Big Red. We're looking at subslab insulation down at the Vineyard Passive House. So give us a little context and just trace out. There's our concrete footing. And here is our perfect block. We have our two outside courses of recycled EPS. You can see the blocks there. And you can see the rebar that ran up and through there. If you haven't checked out those previous videos on the perfect block, go check them out. It's a pretty neat building component. Um, it's an ICCF, Insulated Concrete Composite Form. All right. Yeah, go check it out. ICF, CCF. All right. But today we're talking about subslab insulation. So there is, in the video, our 2B poured concrete slab. All right. Now, one of the issues with a concrete slab is we want to thermally break it from the ground here and have it connect to space. All right, because the space here is conditioned, so putting it inside the conditioned space is basically our goal. Now, some of you might sit there and say, well, we have the ICCF, and, you know, why not just butt it up against that? And for typical construction, that might have been um, just enough and would have worked. But here, because we are looking to get Passive House certified, we are adding... At two inches of type nine, two and a half inches, sorry, type nine EPS. So we get two and a half inches, two layers. We'll stagger the joints there, so that equals five inches. And we have, you can see here, there's our two and a half inches of type nine EPS. So let's run through that right quick. Obviously, two and a half inches. Um, we got that figured out. Type 9 is a type of EPS. It is rated for ground contact. So it doesn't really much matter on the wall here, but it does matter here where we are in contact with the ground or our stone base layer. You can see there with our drain tile. Uh, type 9 EPS, it's not uncommon to find it in commercial use as concrete filler. They use it for concrete filler under roadways, um, one of its very common uses is under airport runways. So you don't have to use as much concrete. They use the Type 9 EPS um, because it carries a 25 PSI rating. So I don't know exactly what that is, but it's uh, you take 25 and multiply it by 144, and you get one hell of a uh, number for bearing. So, should have done the math, but I'll let you do it. 25 times 144. Um, so, certainly enough to carry a residential slab. And EPS is expanded polystyrene. The easiest way to explain expanded polystyrene is it's the little beaded insulation that coffee cups and such are made out of. We just form it in to a board. There's companies across the country. We're very fortunate to have one up here in Rhode Island. Um, and uh, they'll form it to any shape, cut it to shape, um, any thickness, um, anything you want. Again, we chose two and a half inch thickness, single layer on the wall, double layer under slab. The single layer on the wall was because we did introduce a two by four wall that we will then fill with insulation in the cavity here. Um, typically, we're going to do a blown rock wall there. Um, that's what we're doing in the house. So we'll do that. So the three and a half inches at, I don't know, about 4.1 per inch, that's going to be roughly in our 15-ish 
Um, the two and a half here, that carries probably around a 10. So across this assembly here, we get in our 25-ish. And across here, this five inches, we're going to be at roughly our 20-ish. So good R values, but the most important thing is that we've taken everything that we're going to do inside our non-structural elements, finish elements, slab, um, <clears throat> wood framed wall, gypsum board, etc., and we've isolated it because we've created this insulation barrier system that goes between the house and everything else. And that's pretty much, you know, kind of the very basics of passive house is that you build something here, you build the inside, we have a bunch of insulation that's thermally broken on the inside, that it's airtight, and voila, you get a beautiful house um, that doesn't have much heat loss. And that's what this insulation is all about. It's connected to the ground. It's not that the cold of the ground migrates into the basement or the cold of the, the ground here, but when you're at 55 degrees, and this is at, say, 70 degrees, we have that 15 degree delta. So when I put heat into this space, that heat wants to warm the 55 degree space. So we have heat transfer. Heat's always trying to equalize. It's moving from high to low. Cold doesn't move. Heat moves. 70 degree space will consistently try to heat the ground. If we put insulation here, then that slows that heat loss migration into the ground and keeps that <clears throat> nice and warm, right? When it comes down to energy, I'll leave you with one of my favorite uh, explanations. Energy is a pretty simple monster. It's a two-headed monster. One, you want to convert the energy as inexpensive as possible, right? You want that to be very low dollars or no dollars if possible. Hence, solar, wind, you know, some of those environmental um, generated energy systems. But anyways, you want to convert it as low as possible. The second part of that monster is you want to hold on to it as long as possible. And how do I hold on to it as long as possible? Two things. One, insulation. And two, air tightness. All right. So we put that insulation. We have a nice airtight assembly. Obviously, the ground here and the ground out here isn't going to bleed a whole lot of air. So the air tightness part, that's a pretty easy one to solve for. Solve for the insulation. We run the five inches underneath, the two and a half inches up the wall, and voila. We have a nice passive house assembly. We provide continuity. Notice there is no breaks in that insulation. It goes from the sub slab to behind the wall. So we maintain that continuity and we hold on to it as long as we possibly can. All righty. There you have it. Detail. Sub slab assembly. Passive house. Martha's Vineyard. Stay tuned. We got a lot more to talk about on this house. All righty. So. Time to put Big Red to bed. I know. I'm still that poet. You guys like that. I know you do. Um, hopefully you enjoyed that. Sub slab insulation. Passive House, Martha's Vineyard. We were there, we conquered, we talked about it. It was a great, great discussion. I know you guys loved it. Anyways, if you haven't seen any of those previous videos, go back, check them out. I got tons of great information out there. We're dropping it. If you've seen all my videos and you don't want to watch them a third time, then I suggest, hey, go catch Matt. Go catch Jake, Wade, Brent. All these guys dropping great information. It's uh, all right there in front of you. Click away. Go check it out. If you're looking to see a little bit more of me, you find me on Instagram, Steve Basic Architect. I'm there dropping information um, almost daily, and uh, we have some good discussions on there. So 
It's not even so much about the photos, it's the discussions that those photos drive. You get to learn a lot, you get to ask some questions. Um, hopefully I got some answers and uh, we press on. Lastly, every other week, Unbuild It Podcast. Me and my good friends Jake Bruton and Peter Yost, we team up, we have fun, but we break down some uh, pretty neat building science um, concepts and uh, we discuss them pretty thoroughly too. So go check it out, Unbuild It Podcast. So until next time, Steve Basic Architect signing off on the Build Show. Long live our buildings. (laughs) 